Final match on the card for NXT TakeOver Dallas is going to be for the NXT Championship. Finn Balor is going to defend once again against Samoa Joe. And I got to imagine if Joe doesn't win this, he's going out to the main roster. He has to. Kind of like the uh, end zone cast kind of thing. But it's not a guarantee either. So, Drew, what do you think's happening? Is Finn Balor going to retain? And if so, is Joe going to go up to the main roster? Or, first side of things, Samoa Joe wins the belt. And what do they do with Finn Balor, if that's the case? I really have no idea what they're going to do. Because with, su with such a weak roster right now due to injuries and a lot of other things, they could really call either one of them up. I mean, you have the whole Balor Club thing that they tease with, and I, I swear to God, Finn Balor tweets something out about it every week, but it, or every day, but no one seems to pick up on it or freak out about it anymore. So I have no clue what they're going to do. If I had a choice, I, I would love to see Samoa Joe on the main roster. I would love to see Finn Balor on, on the main roster as well. So I'm, just for the sake of one over the other, if, if Finn Balor retains, keeps this champion long reign going until someone else could take the title off him that's fine i think Samojo needs to come up sooner rather than later so i'm gonna go with finn balor for the win and what do you think either of them going up if so who's winning the title blah 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 i don't think just because Samojo loses that there's any chance of him going immediately up to the roster the main roster rather because he'll I think he's a guy who's more just going to be down to NXT to pass on as much knowledge and wisdom as he can while he's down there as a veteran. Now, Finn Balor, th this is, again, this is a weekend on a big stage to show off the talent that they want to be big deals. And Finn Balor's that guy. To have him go out there as their big champion and retain the title, I think would be best for business, the risk of using yeah. that title. So you're going that they both stay in NXT and Balor... Say For now, I mean, they, they both had their chances to get up there, absolutely. Finn Balor more than Joe, of course. I mean, Finn Balor, I think, is another one of those guys who's going to be a huge star going out in the next few years. So right now, this is the other match. The Bailey Oscar was the one other one where I was kind of like, man, I don't know. And I keep going back and forth between Balor and Joe on this one, too, because I can see both scenarios making sense. Like, Balor retaining puts a lot of emphasis on him being like, damn, that dude's held, held that belt for a while and real big deal, real, like, uh, name brand recognition for that whole thing. But at the same time, Joe is no slouch. So him being the champion doesn't seem weird. It's not like if Elias Sampson won or if, uh, you know, Blake won or something like that. It, that would be like, what the fuck's going on? Well, here's the question. Thinking out forward, who would the person potentially feud with afterwards outside of there? So that, that's what's starting to make me think that Joe's going to win more because they've got Nakamura and I'm assuming Sami Zayn's leaving. I'm not going to stick around in NXT, but he might. Who knows? Um, but they've got Nakamura, who's clearly going to be a baby face. And they've got. Apollo Crews, he's not turning heel anytime soon. Austin Aries, he could turn heel pretty much at any time, but I don't think that's happening anytime soon either. Those are three top baby faces that Joe can feud with. And that's really not considering a big name that you haven't said yet. Who's that? You know, the Shinsuke Nakamura before Shinsuke was there. Oh, he's like still a while from coming back, isn't he? Or maybe he's not, actually. I don't know. I don't know what he's... his deal is. He's been out for quite a while now. He should be returning any time. I'm actually kind of shocked that he wasn't able to peel up before this paper or takeover. Shit, he might event. interfere in the match. Has there was been... a lot of speculation that the big reveal actually might be Samoa Joe is who attacked him because he debuted on that night he got attacked. Hmm. Has he ever been a heel, do you know? Who, Kenta? Yeah. Probably like, like, somewhere. Like a significant heel run, not like, you know, a week or something like that. I don't speak fucking Japanese, so I don't watch his run before. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too familiar with him, so I don't know if he's ever done that. Because somebody like a Rey Mysterio it was always like, well, Rey's never fucking turning heel. But uh, Hideo Tommy. Breaking heel. Yeah, boy, he could do more than that. 
But uh, Hideo Watami, he could be somebody that they would turn heel. But he could easily just come back as a babyface. And if they do that, then that's four babyfaces. But if you look at the heel side, if Balor retains and just say that Joe does go up, he's got Baron Corbin. And that's it, really. Then you would need Elias Samson to win that match because shit. Then you need him to be like one of those top ones. But well, they got a lot of people that we haven't seen. Um, you know who I think would be a great challenger for Finn Balor, and I don't know if you're familiar with him, Tony Dylan Miley. Sounds familiar. He's the really, really giant Jack guy they got. They haven't even shown him on TV yet. Hmm. But he's he's a huge dude. He's got massive hands. He's actually fairly athletically gifted. He's a guy I see that's once he comes in, he's going to be making a big impact, and they'll probably rush him right to a feud with whoever's a champion. And if that's a babyface champion, that's the matchup they could do. Matter of fact, I could totally see him being the guy that ends his run. You know, actually, something I've been thinking about, he's I think he's only a few weeks away now, maybe two or three for being the longest reigning uh, NXT champion. If you really want to just keep him the champion, start bringing guys down from the main roster to challenge him to tr- show that they're better than him. It's supposed to be the development developmental league for the uh, main roster. Why not do so? I know we talked about the big show thing a number of times, but I want to be upset if they did something like that. I'd be cool with that if they had enough people. Uh, I mean, this picture there's... now, the guy on the right, I'm assuming, because it's not the other mm-hmm. two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't recognize him at all. He's a big looking guy, though. See, he even looks a little bit like uh, Braun Strowman without a tattoo. He looks Marfleet. like Kane. In his face. Oh. You know, I think he's got a shot. If he looks like Kane, he's got a shot. He's uh, Kane's face with close to a Wyatt family beard on Rusev's <laughs> body. Kind of. Okay. <laughs> sure, why not? And what's his name? Dylan Miley? Dylan Miley. He's just doing, like, the live events? Right now he is, yeah. I think they're, like... I think he's going to be a guy that they hot shot when, once they're ready to put him on TV. Like, they're getting him as seasoned as they can off TV, and then when they're ready to bring him on, they're probably going to shoot him up real fast. Hmm. Definitely a possibility, then, if that's the case. Is he, do you know if he's being a heel or if he's a babyface? I believe he's a babyface, actually. Well, shit, if he comes up as a babyface, then they really need some Joe to win this title. <laughs> Yeah, but they can have him come in as whatever they want. Yeah. He's going to come in as a new member of the Y family. Replace all those injured people. Um, Right now, I got to say, I'm going Joe winning this. It's kind of a sour note for the uh, NXT TakeOver, but I think that Finn Balor could be coming up to the main roster sooner than later. And he might not come up, like, WrestleMania weekend. I certainly don't expect him to like pop up in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal or even the Monday Night Raw afterward, but he could be popping up around like Extreme Rules time or so, I think. And I uh, think, go ahead. I know you said something about it would be a sour note in the takeover event. I would disagree with you on that. Most of the, most of the people who watch NXT, they're kind of that smart crowd anyways. I don't think they really care too much about who wins. I know that since this is a match uh, an event before Mania there's going to be a lot more casual viewers, maybe even a few fight sporting websites to covering it to an extent. But I don't think most people will care too much who would win this match as well as the number of other matches throughout the night. That's true. And The pop I, for a title change. Yeah. And something that uh, we should really mention is on a scale of 1 to 10, how much better is this going to be than Mania? <laughs> Let's... I don't know. <laughs> this is sort of the opposite effect. Like, this card looks good. Mania's card looks like shit. But then again, Mania's really cards... Mania's card looks like shit? I'm not too into it. My you really don't the... think Brock Lesnar and Dean Ambrose is like a cool match? Like, Triple H and Roman Reigns, that's not like a legend versus a current star. That's awesome. The return of Shane McMahon to go against The Undertaker with all the implications of that match. Like, that's cool. not an awesome threesome of matches. Yeah, but what if okay, what if the Shane you're, Undertaker you're, you're gonna you're gonna rate a, the, a card that has what, like what's rate a, a similar level match on this? Um, 
let's say Nakamura versus Zayn, like a guy's first match that we've never seen in WWE before. You don't even know what his post match celebration is, and you're more excited for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're you're more excited for the card that has those guys on it. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, I for I an NXT say... show, yeah. For WrestleMania, that's the whole thing. Is WrestleMania is like, damn it, that should be so much better than what it seems to be for me. And NXT is like, it's NXT. I will say, there's a number of matches I'm actually really hyped for on Mania. Like you, the three main events as well, but also you have the the big guy versus Kalisto. Oh, I, don't I really don't understand all the negativity. For WrestleMania right now, I think it's looking to like it's going to be a good show. I think it's looking like SummerSlam. No, I think SummerSlam could be, a, good be show. a really good show too. I, uh, I really think that this will end up being a good Mania. I just think people are going to be disappointed in it, in it, no matter what. And I really think if that the way that the uh, night's going to be remembered is how much the the fans shit on the main event and. I, I will say that that could really hurt the match if because I know people will cheer for Triple H in most situations, but what if people just don't care and just boo for the sake of booing? Not that I hope that they do this or whatever, but I do kind of admit that it'd be sort of interesting to see it happen if there was this like one continuous boo. Just kind of like as soon as they start going, you know, the next match is for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Boom. I mean, shit, when you guys were there for the second main, uh, twice in a lifetime, wasn't it kind of like that, kind of that feeling pretty much the whole time? No, it was more just flat. Mm. People just did not care at all. Well, that by that point, we already saw, like, all the rest of the car that was just sort of like, mm. so we were uh, already beat to shit, like, everybody gave up. But I'm kind of concerned that this is going to be sort of the same as uh, Brooklyn and the SummerSlam thing like that, where the NXT card's going to be really cool, really fun show, and then SummerSlam slash WrestleMania will just kind of be like, eh, it's all right, I guess. Like, you know, they're kind of the same boat, and that shouldn't be. Like, they should both be awesome, and they I really hope that they are. Like, past two WrestleManias, I, didn't, I wasn't too excited, and they proved me wrong. They ended up being cool. So hopefully that's the case. Last thing I want to see is for like the NXT card to suck and the WrestleMania one to suck too. That'll just be like, God damn, man. Here's the thing you always forget, man. WrestleMania has this grandiose scale. They're gonna be in this huge stadium. They're gonna have all these like magnificent entrances with freaking fireworks and fucking awesome shit. Unless it's WrestleMania twenty nine. <laughs> yeah. I will I will say the one the one thing I always look forward for Mania is just the way that the entrance stage is gonna be. That's always Last one of the best parts about beautiful. it. Last year's was pretty cool. Shit, even WrestleMania 30 with all the X's and what, what looked pretty fucking amazing. Dude, even all right, you know, I'll shit on a lot of things for 29, but 29 set was badass. Oh, yeah, with the, the, bridge, the bridge and the Statue of Liberty. The fucking Statue of Liberty just standing tall above the fucking ring. When I, like, walked over the fucking stands to see that, I was like, what? That's not going to, like, fucking fall over during the event? I still say Jack Swagger should have used it. <laughs> <laughs> We the people. Bring Lady Liberty into it. But as far as NXT goes, what do you guys think is going to end up being the match of the night? Mm. I think, well, Samoa Joe and Balor are easily capable of putting an amazing match on. They they had a damn good match at London, but and I'm pretty positive that was the match of the night there as well. No, nah, match of the night is going to be Bailey and Asuka. That's, That's what, what I was, was going to go thinking. with. Yeah. But the women are going to steal the show again. We should fucking be used to this by now. Right. Secondary, I think, could end up being Nakamura Zane. Or Nakamura Zane, too, yeah. Tag match will end up being good. Like, I, I'm confident that this card's going to be really good. I really think you underrate the Revival. They're they're good hands. Yeah. Like, they've had a lot of good matches the last few ones in their run. And honestly, I think we we might be undervaluing uh, Baron Corbin a little bit as well. He's out there with a good hand, and he's got he's improved the most mm -hmm. out of a lot of people over the past two years. I like Corbin a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want him to like win the world title or anything. He's not well, my one to watch, Sean. <laughs> well, that's his one to watch every year. But I will say, Baron Corbin, he could steal the show if he if he's given the right situation. That could be. Aries is a good hand. Corbin's been making a lot of stride, like you said. That could end up being one of the better matches. Probably my least favorite match of the whole night is going to be Cruz Samson. Yep. But 
uh, Finn Balor, Samoa Joe, um, the whole gun to my head, I'm going Samoa Joe. Peyton, what do you think? New champ? No, I'm going to say Balor retains. And you know, you know why I think that he also might retain? Why is that? Don't forget, he's got a couple friends sitting around. You think they might do a heel turn, or that they're going to come out as baby faces? Who says they're going to come out and be heels? They're going to come out, and people are going to fucking love them. <laughs> That's got a point. So, Jerry, we got a split vote for that one too. What do you think, Joe Balor? I'm going to go with Balor, but not for the same reason as uh, Peyton. Just for the sake of keep that streak going of him. That's one of the most interesting things. Alrighty, guys, those are our thoughts about what's going to happen for NXT Takeover Dallas, as mentioned before. Leave your comments below. Tell us what you think is going to end up happening in these matches. And if you liked our uh, predictions podcast, then give us a thumbs up on the different videos on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't done that already. And follow us all over social media and all the different platforms and such. And go check out the rest hold from the past episode of Smack Talk to hear a bunch of other plugs about ways that you can buy t-shirts and ways that you can click on other content that we've got going on for all sorts of different other things. But... Uh, that's it for my side of the plugs and stuff. Peyton, what do you want to throw out there for some promotional nonsense and whatnot? Uh, listen to us on megapowersradio.com. We have lots of fun post shows to raw pay-per-views. We'll be doing one most likely to the show. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and follow me on twitch.tv slash M-R-P-A-D-E-N. That's Mr. Payton. I do live video game streams of everything from Super Mario 64 to point and click fun adventure games to city skylines lots of cool stuff going down there and i give away free games who doesn't like free games and pizza free games oh, free games pizza. free games pizza. as long any, as it's uh, not the julia child pizza <laughs> oh do you by any chance give away any planes uh, i gave away a plane simulator <laughs> that counts drew plugs anything you want to toss out there Ah, uh, you know, go to the Twitter, which is uh, Drew of White. YouTube's mixed freaking. <laughs> you nothing. blew it, Drew. <laughs> Clearly, you don't know. I hate you it. know. <laughs> you know, the did you know? <laughs> so Twitter, Drew of White. Yeah. YouTube's mixed freaking Duncan, but fuck me, right? <laughs> Alrighty, everybody. That's it for the NXT TakeOver Dallas Predictions Podcast. This has been another Smart Out moment, and we're being counted out. Oh!